sound on. Okay, so this uh automation tutorial, uh automation crash course where we'll go through some past questions. Okay. Now the automation is not difficult. Industrial automation is not a difficult course. What you must do is that you must put yourself into the machines and think like the machines. And what I mean by that is that you must think that, okay, if I was the process running from this step, where would I go to? And after I stay in this chamber for about 30 seconds, which valve will open for me to go into which component? And then what moves for me to go where? So in an automated process, you always need some inputs, right? Driving some outputs. So the output can be a motor moving. It can be a lamp coming on. It can be a valve opening. It can be a couple of things. Inputs can be switch. Inputs are usually switches. They are switches. They are senses. They are the inputs, right? Yeah. So now, mainly we'll be, all, we'll be using SR latch in our systems so let's understand how an sr latch works and then we'll just delve into solving the questions that we have okay and we hope god that god has us good and the questions feature so let's see so if, if i have an sr latch like this right if i have an sr latch like this okay i have my output kill what you must know is that so if i have some let's say i have a lamp here let me call this lamp q0.1 right so Q01 is just a notation for the output. What you imagine is that this lamp will come on. This lamp comes on when the input to the set, this set, when set becomes one, the lamp becomes one, hence it comes on. When reset becomes one, when reset becomes one, the output becomes a zero and the lamp goes off. So that's the first thing you must know that when set becomes one, when set becomes one, output becomes a one. When sets, when reset becomes a one, output becomes zero. Zero. So that's what you must know. Right? So now, if I have an output here, okay, I can regulate how it goes on and how it goes off based on the input that I connect to the set and the reset so if i say if i say that this lamp will come on if maybe let's say switch i01 comes on and it will go off if i press i0.2 it means that when i press i0.1 which is a switch switch let's say s1 let me call it switch 1 i0.1 let me call it switch 2 which can be a stop button i0.2 it means that when I press this switch one here, when I press this switch one here, the lamp will come on. Because I said as soon as set becomes one, the output becomes a one. Now, if I want to go off to, I'll press the stop switch, which I called S2. So as soon as I press the stop switch here, right, the output goes off. Now, what you must know, one thing you must know is that for a stop switch, you always connect it through a not gate. You always knot it before you connect it to the reset. And here's why. Here's why you must always knot a stop before you connect it to the reset. When the stop is in the circuit, it's normally closed. It's closed, so it's allowing current to go through. So it's one, it's at position one. When I press the stop, when I press the stop, what does it do? It cut the line. When I press the stop, it goes to zero. When I press the stop, it cuts the line or it goes to zero. So as soon as this point becomes zero here, as soon as this point becomes zero, I will knot it so that I'll get a one here. Because I said that when I get a one at the reset, that's when I get a zero at the output. So I want a one here. So if pressing the stop button gives me a zero, I must knot it to get a one so that I have this going off. Does it make sense? Yes. So these are the principles that you are supposed to know. Now, for instance, I can also say that, I can also say that, oh, for the lamp to come on, I must press switch one and switch two. 
So it means that here, the input to the set must be two, a two input here. Moving through an end gate. So I can I can connect an end gate here. And I'll say, okay, maybe I0.1 and I0.3. I connect them, right? Have it like this. Here. So when I press switch one and I press switch three, the output becomes one. And once the output is one, it means that what's going through the set is one. And once set becomes one, K O becomes one. I hope that makes sense. Now when I, I can also say that, oh, I can also say that the motor goes off one either when I press the stop button or the overload trips. So I can pass that through an OR gate here like this, right? An OR gate here. And I'll see that, oh, when I press the stop button, so I'm calling the stop button I02. So let me call, so this is stop, right here. Or overload, let me call the overload, overload I0.4. So, or I0.4. When either, this or, so when either the stop goes off, or the overload goes off. When either of them become one, that okay, once I have one, one, I have a one here. And once I have the resets being one, I have the output to be zero. And oh my god, I said that for the switch, when you connect, you must connect it to an okay because when I press the stop, when I press the stop, I get a zero, but I want a one, so I'll not it. Same as when the overload trips, when the overload trips, it has cut the second, so I'm getting zero, no current is going through, it's off, so I'm getting zero here. So I must not to get one year. So note that always note always connect stop and overloads and overloads to always let me start like this to always connect stop and overloads to to always connect stop and overloads to all gates not them before not them before so that's one thing you must know we will have to not before now with this knowledge we can go ahead and start solving the questions we have so that always think of the questions like process wise like you are you are in you are in a factory right so from here what are the inputs from here where do you go how do you go so we'll start so let's let's see a minute, please. 